Hi, I'm Lucy, and I've chosen to do an extract from Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 2, Scene 2, spoken by Helena. Now, what I've chosen to do is basically stick or glue two speeches from the same scene spoken by the same person to each other to portray the two very different sides to her character. The one side being the sad, melancholy, sort of self-loathing character, and the other side being the more feisty, hot-headed, and more driven character. Now, I love Midsummer Night's Dream because I just really, really enjoy how Shakespeare describes the fairy and human world clashing and intertwining and merging with each other. How Puck and Oberon mess with the lovers in the forest and also with, you know, Bottom and his ass's head and stuff. Um, and also how the lovers almost interrupt the life in the forest. My interpretation of Helena is obviously with the two sides, as I've mentioned, and how she flips through them. She's very contrary with her moods, almost like hormonal in a way. And yeah, she just, throughout the entire play, it's one to another, flipping back and forth. And physically, the, how I've chosen to portray her is very tense, very, sort of, she can stand up for herself, but also has insecurities of her own. So I hope you enjoy, and thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I am out of breath of this fun chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. <sighs> Happy is Hermia, where sir she lies. For she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears, if so, mine eyes are oftener washed than hers. No, no, I am as ugly as a bear. For beasts that ne near me draw away for fear. Therefore, no marvel, though Demetrius do as a monster fly my presence thus. What wicked and dissembling glass of mine made me compare with Hermia's sphery eye? But who is here? Lysander on the ground, dead or asleep. I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough, it's not enough, young man, that I did never, no, nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye. But you must flout my insufficiency. Good troth, you do me wrong. Good sooth, you do. In such disdainful manner me to woo. But fare you well. Before I must confess, I thought you, Lord, of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused, should of another therefore be abused. <laughs> <laughs> 